Hello, this is Mark from I Am Energy Organic, and this is part two of Back to Eden Wood Chips versus Fall Leaves. And we're going to discuss why it works. Now, I just want to show you that we have our material in, uh, 50 feet wide and 300 feet long, of our wood chips and also our leaves. Now we're going to take a walk out into the field and do some readings and then we're going to go in the barn and I'm going to show you uh, in a demonstration why it works. It's early in the morning, about a half hour after sunrise, and I want to take some readings. Uh, here we have our soil temp. And that's I would say is about 65 degrees. And then over here we have our soil moisture. And you can see the needle hopefully and that's all the way to the right hand side where it says wet. So that's off the chart. And then I'm going to get a little closer to the pH gauge. Here we have our pH gauge. Let's get a closer look at that in the wood chips. And I would say it's about 6.8 or to 7. Now we're going to move over to the leaves over here and do the same readings there and see what we get. So here we are, we moved over to the leaves and it's been about five minutes just like on the wood chips and we have, ooh the temperature is higher, it's about 72 degrees in the leaves. The leaves are about a foot thick and our moisture again is off the scale, the needle's all the way to the right where it says wet. And now I'm going to take the pH meter and uh, put it in the ground. I'm going to install the pH meter and it should the needle should deflect all the way to the right hand side and then uh, start moving downwards to the level of the soil pH. And we'll let it readjust for a little bit here. Again, I would say it's about 6.87. When I was filming, I noticed this. I will see if I can find it again in the video camera view. And I think it's right here. There it is. A mushroom. These are the original leaves that I put down, uh, let's say, about a month and a half ago. The, uh, the starting point, because I started on the left-hand side and went to the right-hand side of the field where I was putting it down. I just want you to keep this in mind, that mushroom or fungus is part of the key. And I just want to show you that you don't have to do anything. It's there in the leaves when you get it. The spores are all over the place. And it just has a great habitat to grow in. And that is one of the keys to um, back to eating success. And also it's going to help improve your soil. I just backed up my tracker into the barn. I took two soil samples. One of the wood chips side and one of the leaf side and threw it in the bucket of my tractor so we can get out of the wind so you can hear me. Um, the best thing is, what I'm going to do is show you a little background information first of why it works. I have uh, three diagrams I'm going to show you on the left hand side and I'll explain each one. Just let me get a close up of the first one on top here. What I want to show you first is the breakdown of what's in your soil. Um, so let's take a look at the sand particle. If sand's in your soil, which it most likely is, it's this big in comparison to silt, which you can't even see with the naked eye. So if you can't even see this, a clay particle is this tiny little dot here, that one right there, compared to everything else, that's how minute or tiny that is even it. Now, soil is made up of three different components here. You can see, and it's made of water, air, minerals and a little bit of organic matter, say 5%. Some people have higher in their soils and some people have less, but on average it's about 5%. 
So what you have, you have minerals in your soil already, available to your plants. Now I'll get to why that's important, but also too, what you don't have, most likely if your soil is not doing well for your plants, you don't have enough air and you don't have enough water. It needs both of these two to feed the soil food web down below. You'll hear a lot of people talk about the soil food web because it is the main important thing to the soil. It is the soil. That's what keeps it alive. The soil is a living part of this planet. Now, if you do not have, a, you cannot just have bacteria and fungus and nematodes in here. You have to have the protozoa and nematode and arthropods that eat these three here to release nutrients into the soil for your plant. And the plant will tell them through communications of sugars that it extrudes from the roots what it needs to survive inside that soil. So it's very important that you have to have all the soil food web. If you remove the nematodes, it will not function. If you remove the protozoa, it will not function. If you remove the arthropods, it will not function. So you have to have a balance inside your soil for it all to work. And this is achieved by just really by leaving your soil alone. It actually revives itself. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to worry about anything. It comes back to life on its own. So what you can see here, next to the yellow ruler, you have hard packed clay soil. The reason that it is because no water or nutrients or anything else can cycle down here because it's compact. It's hard, it's wet now, but in the summertime it will be hard as a rock on both sides. Now, what they don't tell you about the soil food web is that you have bacteria and fungus in here. And that's like I said when I was saying outside, the secret to back at Eden or why leaves work or wood chips work is that it's fungal food. Fungus actually will break through the soil, come down through here, and through an amazing thing which I'll demonstrate in another little series here, is that it will get inside this clay and break it apart. That's what fungus does. What compact soil has, it has no living life except bacteria in it. It has too much bacteria and it doesn't have fungus in there. So I'll show you in a little bit of another demonstration how the fungus gets from the wood chips and into your soil and breaks it apart for you. So, both leaves and wood chips are great fungal resources, a great habitat for them. It's living food for them to grow and nurture and reproduce, and they feel very comfortable there, and they're going to do a fantastic job for your soil. So, the secret of back to Eden or using leaves is that you're introducing fungus back into your soil, which is more helpful than the bacteria. It has to be an equal blend of both for things to work in your soil. Again, a balance. Now, for example, I have one here. If this string that I say is the fungal hyphae, and this is going to grow down into your soil that is compact, it's going to come down and it's going to hit that compact layer or that soil and it's going to hit it. Now, if, for example, if you had lots of clay in your soil and it's compact, it's really like a bunch of small two by fours, if you look at it, that it's packed on top of each other. And that fungal hyphae will hit that. And you're like, well, you know, again, my roots are hitting that hard pan, that soil. How's it ever going to get through there or something like that? Is That's what the secret is to both of these things again, too. It is to break those things apart. And how it does it with this fungal hyphae, which is the root of the fungus, that's the hyphae, comes down, hits that layer. Now it will break that open like so. And this is what I did. I just made a little thing here. This is the fungus growing in between those clay particles that are very tiny like I showed in the first diagram. Now, on those clay, inside that clay particle that's broken apart a little bit is that fungal hyphae, that white root. 
Now on that, you'll see those little green crystals. They're not green in real life. They're actually probably just white or something like that. And they're oxalated crystals. And now on the oxalated crystal, when it's traveling through the soil or on through the wood chips, it's bringing a lot of calcium. It's like a magnet to calcium. And it brings that calcium down and just surrounds around those crystals. Now also, hyphae, a glue. So that sticks to the wood is the clay particle. And now, instead of those clay particles being stuck together, they repel each other and they open up. So now, the fungal hyphae can get down further bring organic matter down, water and air, and that's what breaks apart your soil. And that's how it all works. And nature is doing this all the time. There's billions of microorganisms working in our soil every single second of the day to help our plants stay non-stressed by any ways. And this is a fantastic way of just keeping your garden alive Again, do not till, do not disturb that soil. You have to give them a living home and you have to create a food intake for them and you, so they can have that air and water go down there and help bring up that soil alive again to uncompact it so it can get their air and well so they can multiply. I tried my best to explain this, but it's, um, I just get very happy to understand it myself because I just think it's amazing. Um, I'm pretty sure I left something out or I met it, might have said something uh, different or something like that. And if you want to research it, it's called oxalating crystals and that's on the fungus that you need. And that's what the food is on top, is your wood chips and your leaves. That's what feeds the fungus that can go down there. Not all fungus and it's not mycorrhizal fungi. It's all the different types of fungus in the soil just like there's all different types of bacteria in the soil. So oxalated crystals is something you can look into. They're envelope shaped. And the other part is uh, the word is called flaculate. And what that means is that the clay particles, which is like two by fours, because they're so minute and they stack on top of each other, that's why they're compact, and they don't let any air or water through there, and that's why there's no life in the soil or nothing can get down below or filter through. That's why you have hard, compacted soil with no life in it. It's mostly back to, it's mostly, it's pretty much all bacteria dominated. So you need the fungus living in your soil. Again, it has to be a balance. Please feel free to write me. Uh, I will try to answer the, your questions as best as possible. Um, I'm learning this myself. Uh, on my farm, just to let you know, now, when all that fungal hyphae gets down there and the bacteria and fungus is equal in your soil, which just takes time to do, but you're no, you don't have to do anything to it. You just have to put the fungal food on top, the leaves or the wood chips. Now, after time, when this is all working, you don't have to have any inputs in your garden. Now here on my farm, I never put any inputs into my farm. I mean, I never put manure down. I never put rock dust down. I never put, uh, I never used compost tea. I never made compost. Um, and I can feed my plants without any inputs. The only thing I use is putting leaves on top of soil, now wood chips, and I, in the past I used to use cover crops, and that adds carbon to the soil, which is the key building stone to your soil. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please write and please subscribe and give me a thumbs up if I think you did at least 50% better than the last one. Thanks.